Voice. My name is Alexina Perry and I'll be your host. But overall, in general, my, I, I strongly, strongly recommend this to all women going out there to aspire. Um, don't listen to your friends. Don't listen to <laughs> you, your family. I didn't listen to them for a really long time. Okay. It doesn't matter. They want the best for you, but they don't really know what, how to get to the best. Yeah. So Today we are at WeWorks and I'm sitting with Joita Das, who is the founder of Guiana. Can you tell me a little bit more about yeah, this? So Guiana is a customer insights platform okay. um, and the platform is basically an on-demand insights platform that sits on top of a data marketplace. Okay. We have uh, many, many data providers from across the top tier uh, UK, European and North American cities who pump in data into the background yeah. and then the platform aggregates all of them to give you insights that come out of regions. So typically we would be aggregating telecom, yeah. uh, GPS, um, social media event, transaction travel oh, wow. all of that data yeah and then you can begin to ask questions on top of the platform as a customer yeah. the customer would be typically we are B2B so th these would be businesses yeah businesses with any kind of physical storefronts whether you're a gym chain yeah. or a pub or a bar or you could be a restaurant you could be a retail store yeah. you can find out things like how many p people were standing outside my store as opposed to coming inside yeah how did that change hour by hour week by week month by month yeah, yeah. you can see how many of those people came Came back how many of those people went to the store down the street who's your competitor yeah, um, yeah. so it's all kinds of metrics about retention loyalty yeah. customers okay. um, competition without actually using your own sales data this is just from aggregated external data sources oh wow so I read online I know this is a little bit old two years yeah. ago that Guiana started off with um, trying to create a vibe from a map right yeah. so you were trying to create feelings like for different different cities so what I want to find out is what was the inspiration behind actually giving a map some feeling what we were really interested in finding out was about how do you get an intuition about a physical spot yeah so let's say you're gonna open up a store or yeah. you're gonna have a pop-up candy shop let's say yeah how do you get intuition about a place um, mm -hmm. intuition is really a massive data driven activity that happens in your brain yeah. it's really big data but you don't really know that yeah we wanted to create that in physical reality we wanted okay. to create the digital footprint of the physical world mm -hmm. by aggregating billions of data points um, and almost in real time yeah. for all the spots of the city that matter yeah because by doing that we thought we will be able to create intuition around those spots okay and then you can get a sense of what yeah. it's really like to be there yeah so if you have a store there you can get a sense if your competitor has a store there you can get a sense if you're looking at expanding you can get a sense of different places yeah so when we use this sentence uh, what kind of a place is it? What do you really mean? What kind of a place? What yeah. do you mean? You can't really clearly define what you mean, right? Yeah. But actually, you know what you mean. You just can't put it in words. Yeah. Kiana is an attempt to quantify that into okay. a real data-driven decision-making. What kind of a place is this? Who's yeah. going in? Who's going out? And what does that mean for you? Yeah. Yeah. So. You founded this um, company two years ago, right? A little over two, yeah. Yeah. So what was the original inspiration? How did you come up with this idea? Because yeah. it's not something you just wake up with and think, yeah, yeah. I want to quantify the feelings <laughs> of an area. <laughs> it sounds crazy, but that's literally what happened. Oh. I wanted to quantify <laughs> all the data in the world. You, you must love. Massive, <laughs> impossible and <endeavor>. Figures. <laughs> <laughs> actually I do. So I have an engineering background. I okay, started yeah. out as a pure, pure techie. Okay. Um, I worked in a Fortune 5 tech MNC for a really long time. Yeah. I worked in Europe, I worked in USA, I worked in India, Bangalore. Okay. Um, I built uh, another tech SaaS startup before. Okay. Um, then I built a non-profit that used technology and this yeah, is my yeah. third startup actually. Oh, wow. So I've always been into how data can drive decision making. Yeah. Um, because, uh, well, it really bothers me. If you look around, it's all the more apparent every year, especially this year and the last. You can see increasingly that we find decision makers, whether they're capitalists or political or non-profit or yeah. any kind of situation, you find that decision makers look at one or two data sets. Yeah. They look at a small part of reality and make decisions based on it. Yeah. And I feel that's how the world is really, really going crazy. Because yeah. if you don't look at a lot of different data, yeah. all the decisions that you make cannot ever be close to fair, just, or perfect. 
Yeah. Yeah. So an endeavor to make decision makers make better decisions means to allow them access to many different kinds of data yeah. and encourage them to look at varied sets, not just yeah. one thing. Yeah. Um, and I think that we wanted to start it, start out with uh, business small business makers who don't yeah. have access to such advanced tools yeah. and see what they're going to do when they get access to so many different data sets in yeah, a simple course. platform. Yeah. Which which is so easy to it's use. So much information it's about the competitors as well. Yeah, it's it's been transformatory for many people that we've ended up uh, selling to. Okay. Um, of course, we have the product for uh, we have a higher tier product for our advanced uh, users as well. Yeah. Some of the top consulting firms, um, public sector agencies, they all use our uh, platform okay. and they use it for larger decision making as well yeah. to understand how an entire city or a region or an area is developing. Yeah. Um, yeah. How businesses are developing and what does that mean for them? Okay. Um, but also small providers are using it. So Ghana is kind of like accessible to everybody. Everyone. You could be a pop-up store, you could yeah. have five stores, you could be 20 stores, you could be a thousand stores, you could yeah. be a market research agency. Basically, everyone. Everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the future for of it? Um, the future of it, oh gosh, it depends on um, when you ask me before or after coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I have like two different versions. Yeah. I haven't had my coffee yet, so I'm not quite sure what I'll say. Um, the future is absolutely exciting. Yeah. I think we are living at the cusp of a world that is waking up to the power of huge data, right? Yeah. We are thinking that there are going to be 20 billion connected devices by the year 2020 in the yeah. world. Wow. Okay. Um, and Ghana wants to have at least 5 billion of those connections yeah. on the platform. Basically. Okay. We want to be able to tell you by quantifying and aggregating massive quantities of data yeah. what's really happening. Um, and I think that's very exciting because uh, let, let's look at the evolution of technology in the world right now. It's uh, There's no other way to get a sense of a place. Let's see um, you know, the autonomous cars coming into picture very soon right so you're not <coughs> driving around talking to people anymore a couple of years down the line there's uh, drones delivering stuff at your home so there's yeah. no longer going to be a person knocking and talking to you yeah. so now you want to open up a business you're mm. going to start selling I don't know jumpers to 16 year olds in a certain part of the city yeah. how do you get a sense of it you no longer drive no one really comes up to your door you can't yeah. stand there and start selling things because everybody's in e-com so how does that world look like yeah. that world looks like a world where where the only way you can get a sense of it is by seeing data points data because points. physical intuition is going increasingly lower you don't yeah. have touch points and i think yana is very very exciting do you think that's also a problem actually oh that definitely physical intuitions of getting course of lower. course of course yeah. absolutely it, it it means that we are tapping far less into our natural abilities yeah. obviously um, I think where Ghana is exciting is we've taken that step of fitting into that world way beforehand mm -hmm. and when that time comes more and more we will fit into that picture more and more and provide this like you said, lessening sense of intuition to people. Yeah. You're going to be able to provide aggregated data inputs to give you a sense of a place even when you're not there. Yeah. What opportunities did you seek that made you, yeah. you know, successful? Yeah. What opportunities did you give up in yeah. order to take mm -hmm. up different opportunities? Yeah. Um, so getting all the opportunities that I got so far yeah. were an insane amount of sacrifices and hard work. Yeah. Right? Really hard. I had to give up a lot. I ha I'm still not doing a lot of things that girls my age are doing. Okay? Yeah. There were times when people were partying, going out, making <laughs> friends. I couldn't have the time to go on a single date and I was growing up in the exact same environment yeah. because my head was down in the books and I was reading from morning to night. Yeah. Um, I was waking up at four in the morning and uh, preparing. I was sleeping at two. Let me ask you something about that. It's funny that you yeah. say you were reading day and night. I read somewhere that one hour or two is like six hours because of how yeah. intense you I'm work. I'm very intense and I work <laughs> really hard. Yeah. I can push myself through the gang grind completely yeah. and I invest so I kind of have this uh, strategy that I developed over years as I grew up developing nation um, born to a single mother it wasn't very easy for me yeah. every single thing was refused a million times before I could get it yeah so I developed the strategy I invest in my physical and mental health so it's very strong yeah. and then I go at the world and get refused a lot but yeah. I can take it because physically and mentally I've invested in my own strength and you also so I eat sense. very healthy yeah. um, I, I yoga and meditate every single morning Really? For years, I've like. How long uh, have you done that for? Since I was a kid. 
Okay. I've learned professionally as well, so I invest in my own strength because I know I will get refused. It's not going to be easy, so I prepare myself to go for that. Yeah. And then I go after it, and I get refused a million, million times for yeah. every single thing. <laughs> uh, but I think where I kind of did well, and I know a lot of people who might have tried with me and didn't do it, is because somewhere you give up in your strength, emotionally yeah. or physically. Either you fall ill because you're tired of grinding your soul every day yeah. at the same door step for years yeah. or you mentally fall ill you can't do it anymore and you give up what helped is um, growing up as a single child no siblings yeah. um, my mother's a young widow when I was born within a few years my dad passed away so I kind yeah. of grew up very hard that yeah. created this resiliency in me that refusal doesn't put me down yeah and because I had to work hard so much all my life anyway yeah it, the trend continues yeah um, and that has been possibly the biggest asset I can get it makes yeah. me really strong I yeah. can go after things um, I think that was probably one difference like even making it to Oxford was like so difficult so yeah. Yeah. So I had I, I had to like uh, crowdfund a lot of my MBA informally okay. because um, because uh, there was no formal way to crowdfund for an MBA back then at least I wasn't aware of one. Yeah. I like spoke to at least sixty to seventy people. Seven of them ended up helping me out. Oh. Even then I couldn't complete everything. I I'm, I ended up getting a lot of it through scholarship that the school offered me. Yeah. Um. Then a little bit of it came from three different jobs that I did while I was doing an intense Oxford <laughs> degree. You know. You know what? <laughs> You have just made me realize the fact yeah. that I'm working and studying with yeah. one job, yeah. it's not I a big deal. I can do Very this. intense ones as well. Um, so one was for a investment bank that yeah. was in China. I worked for them remotely. Okay. The other one was consulting for a really large biotech startup that was just setting up and expanding. Yeah. And the third one was a small consulting kind of a thing. I did all three of those while I was studying and doing my MBA in you know order what? to be able to pay my bills. I'm not going to complain anymore, guys, about <laughs> my life and studying and working and doing women's voice. And, and I think you forgot that at the same time I was setting up Ghana. Oh, 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 <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> so I think, I think it was really, really hard. Yeah. So I had to give up a lot of opportunities because obviously time in a day is limited. There's yeah. only so much you can do. So you have to decide what are the top things. Um, and, and to a huge extent, I don't have a huge social life. I don't have a large number of friends. I decided very early on I'll have a very small, very close group yeah. who are close to me over the years and support me. And I support them and it's really tiny. Mm -hmm. but. By and large, I couldn't go out and socialize so much because there's only so much time you have. Uh, personal decisions, every single thing has to be aligned to your ambition. Yeah. Um, and if you, uh, one of the most important things I learned is if you don't find people who can support it, yeah. don't go with them. Yeah. You know, don't forget about biological clock or friends telling you to get settled or yeah. find a boyfriend or a husband or whoever, whatever. The point I'm trying to make is if you don't find a person who supports the level of intensity and ambition you have, don't go for it. It's great to be single. Yeah. Um, so I did that for a very long Are time. Are you as single? Well. <laughs> I'm not actually. So you telling them to be single <laughs> and you're anymore. not single? Not anymore. <laughs> I was when I started out Gamma. Yeah. Uh, overall, in general, my I, I strongly, strongly recommend this to all women going out there to aspire. Um, don't listen to your friends. Don't listen to <laughs> you, your family. I didn't listen to them for a really long time. Okay. It doesn't matter. They want the best for you, but they don't really know what how to get to the best. Yeah. The world is changing and the situations are changing. And I recommend this to even men. Um, I would say it doesn't matter what even your family says. Don't go after people and partners just to check boxes. Yeah. Unless you find people who can support your ambition and intensity. And you can support this. Yeah. Don't be selfish. Mm -hmm. be, find somebody whose interests you can support and they can support you. And if you don't, take as long as it takes. Go up to your sixth year there here. Who cares? It's a great connected world. You won't be lonely. Yeah. Don't end up with the wrong person. <laughs> yeah. Because the opportunity cost of that is so much more than yeah. being single. Being single is awesome. <laughs> but being with the wrong person is negative. Yeah, um, of course. And that might be one strong reason I see a lot of women who are not able to utilize the opportunities they have. You know, you mentioned earlier the biological clock. Yeah. I think 
that is the problem right now with a lot of women. A lot of women are feeling like, oh, I'm turning 26, I'm turning 25, I have no boyfriend, when am I going to get married, when am I going to have children? And they're not able to actually realize <laughs> that this is the time you're meant to grab your opportunities. Yeah. I turned 30 and I still didn't freak out. I was like, doesn't matter because <laughs> look at the world right now. You, yeah. can, you can have kids even much older. You don't even need to have kids. You can adopt them. Yeah. Um, there's so many other advanced technologies that you can make advantage of yeah. there's so many kids who need a home um, I worked with young kids from a very young age for my nonprofits that I volunteered in yeah, yeah. I feel the same feeling towards them as I would feel if I had my own child so it doesn't really make a difference really yeah there is no clock you can go out and do stuff whenever you want yeah. you're now living in a world where technology has made it possible for you to create biological opportunities for you at any time yeah so let us stop freaking out about that once <laughs> and for all please Stop freaking out. <laughs> yeah. Let us not do that. Yeah. Um and more importantly, I think right now we are living in a world where relationships are malleable as well. You can you can choose for yourself. Yeah. Um, so don't go and do things because your parents or your friends want that. They're on a different track. They lived in a different world. Yeah. They don't know what you want. They're not millennials. They don't know what we are going through. Yeah. And they don't know how, how what kind of inputs we have been subject to in the world. They yeah. cannot possibly imagine a dilemma. So it's all right to completely um, avoid their advice. <laughs> okay. I'm sure a lot of parents won't find this very nice today. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think that it's necessary to listen to them when it comes to personal life decisions or yeah. even professional. Another okay. thing about opportunities yeah. that I wanted to mention, which is yeah. about um, how women can create more opportunities for themselves. Yeah. Um, I think that I feel that there is a there is a two part strategy to this that mm -hmm. um, women lack. The first one was you know neglecting advice that people give you. <laughs> That's the first part. Yeah. The second part is really investing in yourself. Oh, yeah. Because you will get refused a lot. It's not easy. Mm -hmm. It is really hard, especially from a developing nation where I came from. Yeah. Um, the came glass ceiling, India? yeah, was really, really hard to break. It, it's hard to break anywhere, for that matter. It's not easy here. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. You know, with India being a country, sorry, I mean the whole world, anyways, are against women in a sense. <laughs> <laughs> not against. They just haven't thought about us that much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not thought yeah. about us <laughs> enough. Yeah, exactly. With um, <laughs> India being relatively, you know. Um, they come up a lot in the yeah. news yeah. in terms of the discrimination against women. Mm -hmm. How did you actually find the strength within yourself to believe that you are able to do it? Yeah. Especially growing up from that background, yeah. seeing how women there are treated and then being around other women as well who are treated the same way. Yeah. Where did you get your inspiration from? It was really hard. I have to say it wasn't easy. I didn't believe in myself a really long time despite having capabilities. I just didn't have it. Mm -hmm. um, I got turned down a lot. Yeah. Um, so I've had like horrible experiences. Um, at the same time, I have to say that it also inspired me. So when I looked around my friends who were all freaking out about how soon they should have kids and they should get settled, and they were incredibly capable women. Um, I see people in my own family. Uh, my own mother, who's like absolutely the smartest woman I've ever known. Um, she teaches uh, high school science. She's also a part-time scientist. She's incredibly talented. Yeah. I see all of those people and I look at the opportunities they did not get. Yeah. And I thought, looking at all of them, that maybe if I can do a little bit, they will yeah. all get inspired. Because yeah. you need that one example that I didn't get. Yeah. So if you know someone from your neighborhood, from your school, or from your um, own family who's been able to break a little bit of the ceiling, that makes you think like, if she could do it, and she was like in the same situation as me, maybe I can do it. And that's what you need. Yeah. So um, I used to look at Kalpana Chawla, who was okay. a, a astronaut from... Um, an astronaut who tried to get into space and did make a successful entry. I don't know if she was the first female astronaut, but something like that. They didn't make a re-entry back. They, I mean, the the craft burned and she died. But the oh. point is, I followed the entire thing, how they went to space and what happened. I was watching. I was this mm. really young girl on a slow dial-up internet connection, yeah. looking at her going at space. And Kalpana Chawla is of Indian origin. Yeah. And I was thinking, how did she make it up there? What? What track did she do? Yeah. How do you join the dots to get to that point where you have that opportunity? 
Yeah. And I set to work and I would like read and Google up and ask friends and like, how do I join the dots to get to where she did? Like, how yeah. did she manage that? Yeah. Um, and I think looking at me doing a little bit, not a lot, but whatever little bit I'm trying to do, yeah. maybe a lot of other girls, um, and I get emails from them all the time, from oh. my neighborhood, from my school, from my country, and they write to me and say, now they try to join a little bit of the dots looking at me, just like I tried to do, join you know, that's dots. exactly what inspired me. I want them to have dreams. Yeah. Um, and when you have dreams, you'll be able to figure out how to make them true. But yeah. you need to have them in the first place. Yeah. What really bothers me, what really hurts me, <laughs> is if you look at the developing nations, yeah. they, the women don't even have dreams because you've yeah. been told that you shouldn't even have dreams. dreams yeah. That I think is The cruel. system is built to keep you down. Yeah, that I think is cruel. I think you, you're afraid of their capability if you are telling them that you shouldn't have dreams. Yeah. Because if they have dreams, then we'll figure out a way to make them come true. So now we've created an entire social system where we are telling them you shouldn't even have dreams. Oh, you're 25, you should think of a man. Oh, you're 30, you should think of a child. Yeah. You are conditioning them to thinking you shouldn't even have dreams. Yeah. What's a man doing at 25? Learning. What's a man doing at 30? Building his career, making savings, traveling the world. What's yeah. a woman doing? Repairing a broken body, giving birth. It's, it's incredible that we have built it to tell her that you shouldn't even dream. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to give them dreams. And right. I think the only way I can give them dreams is going after mine. Yeah. yeah. And you're doing it so well. Thank you. <laughs>